This is the plaintiff, Janet Grooms. She says she brought her car to the defendant's shop for repair. And when she got it home, she noticed there was a dent on the front bumper on a funny-looking paint job attempting to cover it up. The defendant looked at the surveillance cameras. He admitted one of his employees tried to cover it up and agreed to pay for the damages. She doesn't trust the defendant will fix it properly with his subpar employees who lie and is suing for the $2,004.14 she's owed. This is the defendant, Chris Weaver. He says the plaintiff's truck was damaged by his employee who tried to hide it from him. And he told her he would order a new bumper, install it, and paint it, and pay for it, too. He offered to fix her truck. She refused and is now taking it to a place where it will cost four times as much as it should. He's accused of a cover-up. All parties. Please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff took her car to the defendant's repair shop. When she picked it up, she realized somebody crashed it. But the defendant says, yeah, it was damaged by an employee who tried to cover it up, but she's gouging him. It's the case of the paint job is shady. You're welcome here. Janet Grooms, yes. you are suing Chris Weaver and CNT Towing Incorporated, represented here by Chris Weaver. You're the owner. For $2,004.14, the estimate for repair and car rental to get your car fixed after it got hurt at his shop where you had paid to get your car fixed. Is that right? That's correct. All right, what happened? I brought my car for uh, mechanical repairs, and then he had to call in the part because the part wasn't in the shop. And so he had to get the part delivered. So he kept the car. I came back and picked the car up. It was like a day or two days later. Everything was repaired. I gave him the money. And never once did he tell me that he'd had some sort of accident with the car. To this day, I still don't know what happened to my car. Okay, so, but you're saying that because you go off on a vacation. That's correct. For a couple of weeks, you come back and you right. notice what about the bumper? When I was walking around um, the front of the car, after I came back from vacation, I was like, what is this? Why is the paint looking strange and why is it? I have pictures of it. You know, what happened to my car? Why Can I is see it? the pictures? Sure. I want to put myself in your place when you come back from vacation. Because what you see is not damage, but repaired damage. Right. It was so basically it was um, covered wow. up. Mm hmm That's Wait, correct. Wait, what am I looking at there? Um, the first picture is wherever the damage was done, I guess they tried to uh, meld it back together. And then... Yeah, but it's really, really poorly done. I mean, it's not even like a good... Right. I mean, it's really poorly done. I'm kind of surprised you didn't notice it. Well, I guess you weren't looking for it. Right, I wasn't looking for it. Because it was a mechanical it. thing. Right, it was a mechanical Wait, problem. what am I looking at there? That's where they tried to paint over it. Get out of here. Okay, so, so what happens? So at that point in time, I, I contact the shop. As a matter of fact, I went to the shop. I didn't call first. I went to the shop. Right. And I said, you know, listen, I said, you know, something happened to my car. I spoke to Juan, the mechanic, and he said to me that, you know, I don't know what he said. It wasn't the truth. And he basically never said to me. What did he say? Like, you can't remember? <laughs> like, I so want to know. Was... Is Juan here? No, what a shame. So, basically, um, he just kind of blew it off. Um, and at that point in time, I believe it was Chris's wife. She did come out. Um, and she did uh, speak yes, to me, and, and she did. She asked him what happened, and then she even asked him, well, who worked on the car? And then he turned around and looked behind himself like somebody else, and I'm thinking to myself, but you worked on the car. But I never said that, because I said that's an, a conversation between the employee um, and their boss. Oh, you should have said it. So can I ask you, like, wh while this is going on, what are you thinking is happening? Because it's kind of an, it's an unusual situation. Right. This has never happened before. And you've, you've been in business how long? About 20 years. And uh, how long has Juan worked for you? About four, four and a half years. Yeah. And so when you ask Juan what happened, what does he say? He said, I don't know, nothing, I don't know anything about this. And I, you know, I spoke to her. She said she just came back from the airport where she parked the vehicle. Yeah, but it's been repaired. That's, right. See, that's the and thing. I, if it's damaged... Go away, lady. You've been gone. You parked the car. It's over. But it's been repaired, which right. shows evidence of somebody trying to keep... And it's been repaired super poorly. Did you see and the I, pictures? I you saw told, the car. I said that. I have, yeah. I have pictures. pictures on the phone. I yeah. have pictures on the phone. I said... I was really upset. I, I apologized like 10 times to her. And right. I said, we'll get to the bottom of this. 
we have cameras in the shop. We'll look into this and find out what happened. In so here. did you look? Did you look at the cameras? We did, and, and we did find out that it was another mechanic that was pulling it out. Oh, it wasn't bay. Jose. It wasn't Juan. I mean Juan. Right. It was another mechanic. I can do that and not get a thousand letters. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I already forgot. Is it Jose or Juan? Juan. Okay, it wasn't Juan. No, it wasn't Juan. Oh, okay. Poor Juan. We're all like casting his person. So it was a different mechanic. Right. And did I that said, guy get fired? I said when we. Did you fire that guy? He was suspended for a week without pay. Really? And that's it? Well, he's dishonest. Also, How do you know he's I not going to steal from you and do what? This is like so dishonest. It was dishonest, but. You know, he was sorry, he was scared to lose his job, and... Yeah, he should be scared to lose his job, know? because you know what? He should lose his job. He should. Because you guys are running a business, and your business runs on reputation. Exactly. When you get, you see the security cameras, you see what happened. It's right on the security camera. The guy's lying to your face. Right. Um, when you bring the guy in, what does that guy say? He said he was sorry, and he was scared. You just feel sorry for him, and you didn't fire him? I've, I'm sorry. I feel sorry, and I, I have a hard time you know, firing people, but I would fire that person on the spot because the one thing I'm not going to tolerate is dishonesty. And that's, you know, because that person has access to everything that you've built, that's you right. know? Anyway, so when you find that out, uh, how, you know, I assume it was a big brouhaha at the shop, so he knows that there, you guys are trying to get to the bottom of it and he doesn't come forward and confess or anything. Worse, he uses your supplies to do this terrible job trying to patch it up. So you, do you call her? Yes, I did, and this caller, and I told her I'm really, really sorry for what happened, and I'll take full responsibility for it. I know she was going on a vacation. We only had a few days to get it done. I so thought you had already come back from vacation. Right, the first time I You're was going, going again. again. You were going, going somewhere? Away. Right. I was going, going away again. Go ahead. So I spoke to her, and I told her, really, really sorry about it. Uh, I'll take care of it. And you tell her. I looked at the, the phone, cameras. Yes. And I said, we take full responsibility. I said, did you tell her I suspended him? What did you say? Uh, we didn't talk about it. I just wanted to get to the point. To no, get but did you tell her I looked at our cameras, and yes, it happened in our... Did you say that, or yes, did you just... Yes, I, I did tell her that we did, did it at the shop, that? and we were responsible I for it. I don't know. I'm just finding out now what happened to the car. He never told right, me. Right, but what did happened. he tell you I looked cuz when she when you two parted she said she was going to look at the security cameras. That's right. When he calls you what does he say? He just said he apologized. That was it. And the, it was the, wasn't until the following Monday when I spoke with him on the phone over the weekend. I stand corrected. I spoke with him and then he said come on up here on Monday and let's see how we can address this. Okay, do and you? And so, yes, I do. But he's not there. He left to go to, I don't know, one of the stores or something, Costco, BJ, something like that. Anyway, he left. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm here. You're not here. So they get him on the telephone. And then he says to me, I apologize for it. And he never told me what happened to the car. I know, but did he ever tell you that he looked at the security cameras? No, yesterday? he never told me. So that. he just tells you, I'm taking full responsibility. I'll take care of it. Right. And you don't like that response. Right. Because well, you have what you deem to be a dishonest right. shop. Exactly. Right. Right. And then, because he never told me it wasn't So you know, wrong. I would have handled it differently. I would have told her, listen, I have a rogue employee. This is what happened. I called him in. I disciplined him, you know. He, he's got a wife and three kids, whatever, whatever it is, whatever reasoning you have for not firing him. Uh, I might even tell her I fired him even if I didn't, um, so she'd feel good. And then I'd say, this is horrible, I don't do business this way, let me take care of it. Then I'd feel better about giving you back the car. But if all you do is call her and say, we'll take full responsibility, she's thinking you're, dis you're dishonest, not some guy you have working for you and still have working for you is dishonest. We made an appointment to meet up at the body shop. Everything was there at the body shop to have it fixed, to repair. And the body shop said he would go out and paint it. It needed a molding. It was quicker for me to get the molding and cheaper so I can put it on because she's leaving in a no, few days. No, I know days. it's cheaper for you. Cheaper to put it on and... and what, what body shop? Not your body shop? No, a body shop two miles down the road from Who the shop. Who picked the body shop? Uh, there's a body shop I deal with as Mako, which I do business with him. And, it was and what was wrong with that result? Because it, it's not in their hands. Again, it's in a third-party body shop. So this guy gets caught on surveillance, lies, and all he gets is suspended. Should he have been fired? Fired. Does it say anything about the owner not firing the guy? Well, the guy lied. The guy totally lied. But does it, is, is it a statement about the owner not firing him? Uh, yes, absolutely. He should have definitely been fired. And when somebody doesn't fire somebody like that, what does it say about the owner? Uh, he's negligent. OK, I tried, going inside the courtroom. At this point in time, I never met with Chris. Juan, who I'm thinking is the one that damaged the car, is the one who I have to follow to a body shop that I know nothing about. Right. 
And then Juan proceeds to work with the body shop manager. They go on the computer. They look up the parts and, and everything. And then Juan says to me, I'm going to order the parts. I'm going to put the parts back on. And you think and, Juan's And I'm the like, culprit. okay, well, first off, number one, we wouldn't be here if you had been honest from the get-go. And I said, number two, I don't have that comfort level with you because our trust relationship has been You said breached. that to him. I said that and to him. And what did he say? Um, he calls and gets Chris on the telephone. Right. And then Chris is on the telephone. He's like, look, I could do it real quick. It'll save me a whole lot of money, and you can just leave it. And I said, no, it doesn't work like that. I have other responsibilities. I can't okay. just leave my car, and it should go to the body shop, and he should do all the work. I was even willing to go with their body shop as long as he guaranteed that the body shop did all the work. Uh, listen, you guys are trying to do the right thing, and I yes. see that, okay? You're not, uh, you know, I've had litigants in front of me who, you know, they're, you know, you could have easily just said, I don't know what you're talking about, lady. It would have been hard because it was a repair job, but anyway. It was the right thing to do. It was the right thing to do, and you try to do the right thing. Um, I think that the estimate is a fair estimate. Um, you basically look at a car and have to paint it, and, and you know, it's going to cost you uh, $1,500. It's, you know, this is, and, and plus somebody has to undo what was done there. But anyway, I think that the car rental is a, a reasonable estimate, and I'm going to order you know, and I feel bad because I think that you guys were trying to do the right thing in a way that was cheaper for you, and it would have been great if it worked out, but there is no obligation on the part of any plaintiff who has been wronged like this to let you fix it because they've lost trust. And so um, I, even though I know this was a much cheaper way to fix it, she is entitled to have it fixed at a new place that, and not have to give it to you to fix in a more affordable way. She's entitled to pick her place, is what I'm trying to say. Every plaintiff is entitled to pick their place when the defendants do something wrong. And your guy did something wrong. All right, so I'm ordering the defendants to pay the plaintiff the full amount that she's asking for, $2,004.14. Good luck, folks. Okay. Thank you. So it comes down to a matter of trust. The plaintiff had lost trust in the defendants and deserves to prevail and gets what she was seeking. What's your reaction? I think it's fair. Uh, all I wanted to do was just to fix the vehicle, get it up and running. Unfortunately, you know, something happened at the shop I wasn't aware of until last moment. Yeah. And she's right. She needs to get her car fixed, and I'm happy it was done, and I'm happy with her. That's it. <laughs> okay, you lost two thousand dollars, and it. you're happy. That's rare for a defendant to say fear. that. You okay it's with only it? Fear. I'm okay, you and I do agree with the judge. He should have been fired, but Janet also said that she didn't really want that. Yeah. And we did have a meeting debating to fire him or suspend him. Well, but I, I presume you've learned something from all of this. We, yes. we have. Definitely. Well, thank that's you. good. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you must you. sign a few documents. Miss Rivers is on her way out of the courtroom. Well, good for you. You must feel pretty good right now. I do. I do. I feel much better. And we, this all could have been avoided. I mean, I think if you have a, a business and you're working with customers, you owe it to them to show honesty and integrity, especially when we're paying for a service. The judge totally agrees with you. Mm -hmm. And that's why you won. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. All righty. All right. Harvey? Okay, Doug. So, you know, here's the thing. The plaintiff has a right to decide where the car should be fixed, period. It's a plaintiff's decision as long as the, co the cost is reasonable. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.